Welcome to the Clear Admit MBA Admissions Academy. I'm Graham Richmond and I'm with Alex Brown for this lesson on interviews. Alex, this is our fourth interviews lesson. And this one is, I would say fun, but it's not because it's killer questions. So these are the questions that I think people struggle with when they have an interview. And so we're just going to go through them. I'm going to give you the questions and I want you to tell me how people can shine <laughs> when answering them. But before we do that, I did want to mention that if you get a difficult question, because there's no way that, you know, we're going to share some examples, but there are invariably going to be questions people get that aren't on our list that are hard, right? right? So if you get a difficult question, take your time. Like there's nothing wrong with pausing and reflecting for a moment and don't get flustered. One interview question does not make for an entire interview. So just take a pause, take a breath, think before you speak. If anything, it makes it more authentic. In, in my view, you know, that it sounds like, oh, this person's really giving it some thought before they rattle off an, an answer. So, but let's go in. <laughs> I, I would say easier said than done, Graham. I know. You're sat hard. in a Harvard interview. They ask you a killer question. Yeah. Yes. You run for the door. Yes. <laughs> no. So, okay. But here's one. And this, I mean, what's funny is some of these don't sound so bad, but when you're on the spot, they can seem more challenging. So yeah. this first one, just describe a failure in which you were involved. Yeah. So what do you do? <laughs> I mean, again, we've talked about this question. It comes up in the essays in, in, you know, in different variants, but it's the same question. You were involved. There was a failure. What did, you, what did you contribute to it? What did you learn from it? How did you progress from it? And a more recent example. It's a sort of similar approach. Um, and again, the reason why it's... Yeah, it's a stressful question is you know folks are coming into interviews wanting to you know show their best side and all of a sudden you're asking them directly well tell me when you failed and I will also you know add add to this um, those folks that haven't failed they've not tried hard enough yeah so if you keep that in the back of your mind you, you've not gotten out of your comfort zone um, that's not a good message to send so you do need to have these failure stories and I think it goes a long way, you know, yeah. to, to be able to demonstrate that you recognized when you didn't measure up, yeah. learned from it, and have moved on. So, yeah, and, you know, be authentic. This is a question yeah. where it's fine to take ownership over a failure, yeah. assuming it wasn't catastrophic in yeah. nature. Um, here's my favorite in terms of, I think this is brutally unfair, but some schools will say, where else are you applying? Yeah. And I hate that question because... Yeah. You know, schools are in the rankings, they're different. And, and so imagine you're interviewing at a school that's ranked number 20 and you happen to have a school that's number 10 on your list. Do you, I mean, how do you deal with that question? Because you're invariably going to then kind of show your, yeah. your cards a yeah. little bit. So this question is unfair. Yeah. So I, I can't endorse this question. Sadly, some schools still ask this question and, and I think that's poor on their part. Mm -hmm. um, the only way to answer it is to be honest. Um, the schools won't won't know if you're being honest, so I'll tell you that. Yeah. There's no sort of background database that they can check and did you really apply. But I think the only way to answer any question is to be entirely honest and transparent. Now, so the way you approach that is going to be articulate what the other schools are. Uh, make sure it shows that there's some coherence in your application strategy, right? So it's not a, a disparate set of schools that have no relation to each other. So that's going to be important. But as you finish this sort of uh, question, also reinforce why this particular school that you're interviewing is a great choice for you. Yeah, and I, I think that's the key piece yeah. because you can be give them the real list, but you need to be able to convince them that even if they are ranked lower than some yeah. of the other schools on your list, that there's a reason they're on your list and that you're really excited about yeah. them. So that that is important. And I think, yeah. you know, arguably any school in the top, you know, whatever, you know, 30, are, there, there are compelling reasons to go to any of them. Yeah. And so I, I think you got to be able to make that case. But it is unfair, but schools ask it. And yeah. I always think they're asking it because they're trying to figure out, oh, if we admit this person, Absolutely. will they come? Which is just sort of not. And, and we, we'll talk about the, this a little bit in our next tip when we talk about weightless. I think it's our next lesson. Oh, two more lessons yeah, when we talk yeah. about weightless. Because there is a little bit of dodgy activity, I would argue, that yeah. some schools will go through. Yeah, and it's not as though when you're interviewing, you can ask the school, are you talking to anyone else about yeah. spots in the class? Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> so yeah. uh, all right, so the next one is, 
a conflict. T- tell me about a conflict at work and your role in it. Yeah, I mean, again, kind of like the, the failure essay, people don't like to talk about negative situations. Um, and and quite often, this is a sort of question, actually, folks don't really prepare for, because it's quite specific to a mm-hmm. work situation where you had a conflict. And typically, when you have a conflict, it's a conflict with a peer or someone else at work and so on and so forth. And what you don't want to do is get into a situation, as you said before, where you're throwing someone under the bus as you're describing the conflict. It's all their fault. It was never your fault and so on and so forth. And I think what, what's most important when you address this question is how did how was the conflict resolved and what's the, the new status as a result of that conflict? So if you can sort of take the, your, your interviewer through that journey, I think you can actually turn what was a conflict into actually a very positive sort of learning experience. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I feel that, you know, this one can come in different flavors too. Sometimes they'll say, tell us about a time you were a part of a team that struggled or, you know, that, that, that there was conflict in a team. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, just keeping that in mind. But I, I do feel that showing that you that it was resolved and maybe your role in helping to get it resolved yeah. w- would be helpful. I do want to say that there are certain traits or things like, you know, if you if you were to say something like, well... We were working late, and I I have a short temper, and I kind of lost it. That doesn't it. work. No, that's dangerous, right? Yeah. So it's it's better for it just to be more of a disagreement. People not understand, you know, some, some need to kind of create better lines of communication yeah. and expectations because there are certain characteristics that you know could be a little iffy. Right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, moving right along, another one, and this one again, uh, tricky. What concerns do you have about getting an MBA? Yeah. I mean, this is a very good question, actually. It's a tricky question, but it's a very good question. Because at the end of the day, um, what, 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 what concerns can you have? You're dropping out of your career for two years. I would think that potentially can be a concern, especially for more non-traditional candidates, mm-hmm. um, where the pathway might not be as clear-cut. So, so, so that can be a concern. And, you know, the, the, the MBA costs quite a lot of money. So the investment that you're putting in, anytime you invest at that level... The, there are risks and concerns. So I think you, you can approach it in that regard in terms of answering the question, but then you sort of recover the situation by by sort of reinforcing the research and the thoughtfulness that you put through this process to recognize that you think this is the right next step for you. Um, but, but yeah, the, the, there's got to be risk when, you, when you're investing that much in, in, your, in, your, in, your, in your time and, and, what and, if- and money. What if a candidate were to say, you know, I've done my homework and I, I would, you know, I'm interested in getting an MBA. One of the things I do worry a little bit about is I know that everyone who comes here is off the charts amazing. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I don't know that I, you know, I, well, I feel like an imposter. Is that okay? I mean, people talk a lot about imposter syndrome nowadays. What would you feel if you're the admissions officer interviewing someone and they said that? Yeah, imposter syndrome. I'd, I'd wonder if they're being a bit cynical, actually, quite frankly. Yeah. Are they being honest? Because they've got the 760 GMAT. They've got <laughs> right, the, the right. work experience at McKinsey. Or they've, got, they've got something that's brought them to the table for the interview. So right. my point is, yeah, there might be a few people, maybe a non-traditional candidate might be able to use that because, yeah, they were maybe they were surprised that they've been able to jump through these hoops yeah. because they didn't think that because they weren't a banker in a con- or a consultant that they were credible for a top-tier program, which they clearly are. That type of candidate, that, that could be a reasonable response, but sure. I don't think a traditional candidate should use that. Yeah, agreed. So the last one that we'll go through here, and again, there are other killer questions out yeah. there, but this yeah, is yeah. just to help you know, help folks get into it. But how would those close to you describe you in three words? And and by the way, these questions that we've picked are here because they've come up enough yeah. to be on the list. So we're not yeah. pulling them out of thin air. Yeah, so yeah. This is one that does get asked. Yeah, yeah. We, we collect them from the interview archive. Right. There's so, a, a reason why that's quite a good resource. Yeah. Um, so what do you do with this kind of question? How would those close to you describe you in, in three words? I mean, this might even be an essay question, one of those creative essay questions that you like, Graham, that I don't. But, <laughs> <laughs> right. But, but, but yeah, I mean... Is it, quite frankly, I would try to ask a few people before I go to the interview, how would you describe me? Because it would be good to get a little bit of feedback. I mean, that's all, always good to have that feedback anyway from yeah. your fa- friends and your colleagues and family and that. And recognize family are going to say different things to friends and colleagues. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 
why is it difficult if you haven't asked those questions is it's quite hard to describe yourself yeah agreed but i think for this one now that everyone watching and listening knows that this is a question that could come up ask your friends yeah. colleagues how they would describe you in three yeah. words so that you have yeah. um some fodder to answer that question how would you describe me in three words Graham? uh an oh excellent... boy we will cut, cut, cut. <laughs> cut, <yeah. laughs> um, all right so next up in the admissions academy we're gonna have another lesson on interviews and it's going to all be about virtual interviewing <laughs> Thank you.